good morning. This is the Jay Show. I am Dr. Jay Smith here in London. And back with me again is my good friend, Hatun Tash. Hello, Jay. Thanks for having me again. Listen, uh, it's been terrific. Uh, some of the material that we've been working on, you and I have already done 14 segments, 14 uh, episodes of The Jay Show. And in those 14 episodes, uh, we looked at some research that you've been doing for the last year and a half, uh, yeah. two years, concerning the Arabic Qurans. Now, give us a quick overview of what, you, what we found or what you have found and what we talked about on The Jay Show. Yeah, we asked the question, the Qur'an's Muslims are reciting or reading in 21st century. Is it exactly the same in all over the world? Because they make that claim, don't they? Uh, yeah, that, that's very general claim we hear from Muslims. And um, we come up, uh, there are minimum 26 different Arabic Qur'an you have stand. Found, that you have found. There are minimum 26 different Arabic Qur'an stand, current Hafs Qur'an. And these are Arabic, so these are not translations, these are not English or, or Indonesian or Swahili Qur'ans. No, these are these Arabic. These are the Arabic Qur'ans, the language of Allah. Which you found, uh, or your friends found, in places like where? Where did you find these um, Qur'ans? In Africa, in Middle East. In different countries in the if, Middle yeah. East, in North Africa. In North Africa. So you went to the marketplaces. These are ones that are on sale today, so they're not yeah. trying to hide this. You, you just go to the bookshop, and then you ask them to um, give you one of the reading of the Quran, and then you just um, have it, and then check it out. So you're right. You were quite transparent, quite open for what you were asking, the yeah. readings, and they knew what you were talking about. Yes, yes. Now, we have always been told, Hatun, that these Qira'at, or these Ahruf, are well, there's nothing really different about them. They're, they're certainly, uh, they don't change the meaning. They don't change the reading. Uh, really, they are nothing more than synony yeah. synonyms. And uh, you and I have always assumed that that was the case, right? Yeah, actually, those 26 Arabic Qurans are different than the current Quran Muslims are reading and reciting. The general current Quran Muslims are reading and reciting called the Hafs Quran, which comes from Kufa. Yet, and it was actually compiled by a man named Hafs, yeah. supposedly in 805. Yeah. That's the date that they give him, 805 yeah. AD. The Muhammad died in 632, so you're talking 150 years after. 150 years yes, later, after, yeah. 60 years later, you're finding that this a student of another teacher is actually coming up with a different additions, different variants. We don't really know, do we, if this is really Hafs? Uh, we don't know because we don't have anything uh, which can take us that it's far back. It's attributed to him. That's yes. the word we say in English. It means it's put on him because there's no manuscript that yeah. Hafs has that we could see today. So we're hoping that this is Hafs. But nonetheless, that's quite a bit later that we get these variants. Yeah. But um, even in t um, 2017, when we compare those different Arabic Qurans, we see they are differ from one another. And there are so, uh, not just a few. These are not just hundreds. These are thousands yes, of differences. Yes, we, um, we, we've got 26 different Arabic Qurans than Hafs Quran. We looked at um, 23 of them. And it is uh, our, the number come up is 45,329. Hold on a minute. That's a huge number. And I, I think it's hard to get in my mind. Yeah. 45,339 45, variants. That means different, different. readings. And the readings are uh, Muslims. Different words. Different words. And by that you mean they have dots sometimes below, below yeah. the lines differently. They, they may have two dots above for a ta or two dots below for yes. a ya. Or it could be something as simple as a dagar alaf, yeah. an alaf that is added or retaken away. Now, when you take away or add alafs, when you take away dots or add dots, when you take away vowels, dama kasra fata, and, and add them, it changes not only the reading, but it changes the meaning of the words, doesn't it? Yes, they are very visible. You can, you can easily recognize them. Sometimes, in fact, some of them, not all of them, they even color them. They yeah. put them in red or blue so yeah. you can see them. They want you to see them yeah. or they put them in the margins as we it, saw. It is not surprising to the Muslim world. Um, people know about it, but they never talk about it. Um, and only few people bother to check them out. So, so we did that, check them out. Th that's the reason why to, in 2017 we don't have the critical edition of the Quran. If people checked it out, then we would have the critical edition of the Quran. We would have we a would critical edition. So you did check it out. You were concerned about this. You mm -hmm. had heard about this. You wanted to find out if they were very different. And we found quite a few differences, yeah. didn't we? You went with some Arab scholars, because you and I don't speak English. I mean, I've had two years of Arabic, but I would yeah. not call myself an expert. You've not had Arabic, uh, so like you would not call yourself an expert. We need to, um, because it is very sensitive topic, it is holy book of our dear Muslim friends. So we need to be very sensitive and we need to make sure we represent it in um, 
accurate real way. So we, we went to Arabic speakers um, and then we asked them to check those um, words and then tell us if it changed any meaning or not. And so we actually sent these to some of the best Arabic scholars yeah. today. Uh, we can't name their names. We're not permitted to on this show. They cannot yeah. come on this show. They do not want to come on this show. But we had to use them because this is not our language. It was yeah. their language. And they were the ones that found and showed us and gave us the translations yeah. and showed us how different the translations are between the yeah. two texts. And some of them were quite different, weren't yes. they? Because Muslims are not open about it, so we had to uh, bring it forward. So ex now we expect Muslims to look at them and then come back to us. Well, I think the problem problem was in Hattin, we found this with an awful lot when we do, when we deal with especially Muslim polemicists or apologists. They tend to only use those examples that don't change the meaning, yeah. like Surah 1, Ayah 4. Yeah. They always like Malik to do Malik, Malik versus yeah. Malik. Yeah. And they would just use that as an example and say, yeah. see, there's nothing much different. Did he, was yeah. he an owner or was he a ruler? Did he, was he a king? But that's, that's not very honest because Quran makes a ser serious claim about individual's eternity. And you cannot, you cannot be that much bad, honest, and then look at the Quran in that way. Yeah, you, yeah. We need to be honest, and Muslims need to be honest about it as well. Now, we're going to change gears now. Coming into episode 15, we're not going to look at a historical critique now. We've moved away from the historical critique. We'll be coming back again in further episodes. But what I want to do now is I want to start unpacking some of the theology, some of the theological okay. problems. Uh, with the Quran. Now, one of the things that we get hit with at Speaker's Corner all the time, almost every Sunday, are the idea of God being one. Yeah. Help me with some of the, what are some of the major themes that they throw at us concerning the Trinity and what yeah. they don't like about our view of God? Uh, they don't like the biblical teaching of the God because Quran from um, um, Fatiha to Surah Nas talks about there is only one God and people are called to worship that God. Yet, um, Quran fails to represent the biblical view of the Christian doctrine regarding the Trinity, believing in one God who is in three persons. Uh, so, uh, Muslims teach and tell us that Islam is the religions of monotheism, believing in one God. Okay, Tawheed is the yep. word in Arabic, means the oneness. That's yep. the word they're always looking for. Fascinating, isn't it? You can't find that word in the Quran. That's all right, because it's a theological term. So it's the same. But it's the, the same question. Trinity. They say, where's Trinity yep. in the Bible? We could throw that just back yep. at them. So Tawheed is not found in the Quran. Yep. Uh, it is the definition of what their God is. Yes. If it's that important, why can they not find that theological definition in the Quran. And the same token, Trinity is how we view God, three yet one. Yeah. And we can't find that word in the Bible. Yet, but there is a problem. We cannot find that word in the Bible because it's a theological term. The question is, why cannot we find that word in the Quran? Because it's supposed to be in the Quran. By, ah. six, by seventh century, uh, doctrine of Trinity was well known. So why didn't they use it? Uh, word has been used all around the Christian world, yet, um, author of the Quran doesn't know anything about say it. Say not three, for God is one. There, yeah. Why did they say, say not Trinity yeah. in Surah 4, Ayah 171? Oh. Why didn't they introduce the word at that time? Yeah. Obviously, they didn't understand it, or either they didn't hear about it, or they didn't understand it as far as it's unpacked. Now, we can see that because when you look at the Quran, there's a huge amount of misunderstanding yeah. concerning the Trinity, Surah 5, Ayah, Surah every, 5, every Ayah 72. Doctrine, yeah. Uh, thinking that God has a partner, Surah 5, Ayah 116, assuming that Mary is part of the Trinity, yeah. Surah 6, Ayah 101, and Surah two, 102, it's stip uh, stipulating that God doesn't have a consort or a wife. Yeah. So these are, uh, they're really confusing Mary as part of the Trinity, as being yeah. the wife of God, that God, that Jesus somehow is the partner of God, that God can't eat, Surah 575. And it goes on and on. There are many misconstruing of this view Trinity. So you can understand that why they say, why they're attacking this. I mean, I, if I were a Muslim, I would attack it as well. I can understand why they are using those verses to attack my faith, but I cannot understand why the author of the Quran, which is Quran is the eternal speech of Allah, why Allah doesn't know, I don't think I can understand that. And I don't think I can understand why Muhammad didn't pass the um, correct information. So Muslims, you can understand misconstruing it, but the Quran, for where they're getting these yeah. misconstruings from, I should have at least understood the biblical view or the Christian view of the Trinity, yes. since it's attacking that very view. Yeah. Why did it, why, 
those who wrote the Quran, and we're going to find later, Hatun, that actually there are quite a few people that wrote the Quran. Yep. Uh, we've already seen the, the ver many variants yes. that come yep. into it. We're going to go back and show that there are quite a few human authors of the Quran. That's for another for other episodes. But here we're going to ask this. So if they got it confused on concerning the biblical view of yep. God, do they not also have a confuse, is there not also a confusion in the Quran concerning the... Islamic view of God, yeah. if God is one, Tawheed, is, does the Quran agree with that? Uh, that's what Muslims are teaching us yet. Uh, does the Quran agree with that? Um, I would say answer would be no. Okay, and you actually have done some study on this, yeah. and you've looked at the Quran itself, you've gone back to the traditions, and you've asked this question, is Allah really one? Yeah. Is Allah really Tawheed? Is he really Tawheed? Yeah. Um, and you have found that there are some problems. Yeah, um, argument comes back a couple of years ago. One of our Christian brother had a debate with Shabir Ali, Jonathan Makachi, um, who learned from the Sam Shamun to learn use the argument in the debate. Because it was in the debate format, um, Shabir Ali just moved on and didn't even respond to arguments. But now when we he look- He sidestepped it like yeah. Shabir Ali always yeah. usually does. But when we look at the uh, actually teachings of the Quran, we see yeah, there are, there are some problems uh, in the teachings of the Quran regarding oneness of Allah. Okay, and where is this problem in the Quran? Because we're, we're not just going to do the Quran, we're also going to look at the traditions, aren't we? Yeah, so um, Quran teaches there is only one God who is named uh, as Allah. We read this in Surah 27. We've got the same stories in lots of different surahs. So we can read the same things in Surah 20, but because we don't have time to go through all of them, let's look at the Surah 27 one. Okay, seven to nine, let me just read it out loud. Yeah. And this, the, uh, so that, so you can, I'm gonna be, of course, reading it in English. It's, this is an English program. Yeah. Those of you who want it, I, I, one thing I like to do for those of you, I always like to make sure I have the Arabic next to the English, uh, because a lot of the times the Arabic and the English do not correspond. Yeah. And Muslims need to see this. I'm using uh, the Dr. Muhammad Taki uh, Uddin Al Hilali and Dr. Muhammad Musin Khan's translation. Which is one of the very bad translations. One of the worst, but, but it's the one the Muslims like the best, so we have it, yeah. to use it. So it's maybe, uh, it may be good for you to get a Quran that has both the Arabic and the English next to it, so you can check up whether or not the translations are correct. The other thing I'm going to just say, as people are reading the Quran in English, remember, whenever there is a parenthesis, that is commentary. Yeah, All right. That's that, not in the Quran. That is not in the Arabic. Don't read that. So I'm not going to be reading the the parentheses yeah. pur purposely because we only want to read the translation of the Arabic. It's difficult to do because sometimes there's so much commentary. Yeah. It gets almost difficult. It's hard to go right through it. So let's start with verse yeah. 7 of Surah 27. When Musa said to his household, Verily, I have seen a fire. I will bring you from there some information, or I will bring you a burning brand that you may warm yourselves. But when he came to it, he was called, Blessed is whosoever is in the fire, and whosoever is round about it, and glorified is Allah, the Lord of the Alamin. The Alamin would be mankind or yep. jinn and uh, yep. uh, all the other things that exist. Verse 9, O Musa, verily it is I, Allah, the Almighty, the All-Wise. So, um, we've got the similar stories in the Bible in Exodus chapter 3, uh, which gives us the more details, but we are going to go with the story which is in the Quran. This is also so, in Surah 20 for those who need Surah 20 verse 10 to 14. Yeah. So in, uh, because we are looking at the Surah 27 right now, so what's happening is Moses is seeing a fire from the in the distance. In the distance. He goes to he, investigate. He goes to check it out. And to bring back a brand, he says, yeah. Uh, yeah. To, to start his own fires. Yeah, and then someone from the, that fire speaks. So within the fire, there is yeah. a voice that speaks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there is someone in that fire speaks and then says, I am Allah. Now, in chapter 20, the voice in the choir in verse 10 says, take off your shoes, Moses. This You're on holy, holy ground. ground. Yeah. Let me ask you something. Hatun, holy ground, what does that mean? Holy ground is used in the concept of God is present. That. So only where God is present can there be holy ground. Yeah. And we know that biblically, and also Muslims would say, say if, if there are any Muslims watching, you would probably admit that wherever there is God, that is where but, holy, or put yeah. it the other way around. Nowhere where God is not can there be holy ground. Okay, so we can put it both ways. 
So yeah. that implies what, Hatun? Um, God of Quran is in the fire. He has to be there. He, he is there, and then he says, oh, I am, it's me, I am Allah. So he says that right here in verse 9. Yeah. Almost a verily, it is I, yeah. Allah. Okay, help, help me here, Hatun. Can anybody claim the name of Allah but God himself? No, that that is only belong to Allah. Only God can claim that yeah. name. So, and that, could an angel claim that name? No. Angel would say, I am messenger of Allah, I am angel from Allah. Can but the spirit make that claim? No. No. Ooh, tu, 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 tu. You cannot take some, uh, cre especially the name of creator to yourself. You can say, I am the messenger of Allah, I am the servant of Allah, I am the slave of Allah, but you cannot say, I am Allah. Because if you take the name of Allah and you're not Allah, what have you just done? Bless me. You have just committed shirk. Yep. Shirk is the unpardonable sin, sin because you're a, you're appointing someone or something along with God. God. Yeah. So if this being or this creature or this whatever this is in the bush yep. or even the bush itself is claiming to be God, it's committing shirk. Yeah. So uh, Arabic word used is fi, which means in the fire. In the fire. So Allah is in the fire and then Allah introduces himself to Moses and then says, I am Allah. Which is fine, we don't have any problem with that because when we go back to the um, book of the people of the book, we go back to the Bible and then we read the similar stories and then we see God of Bible is in the burning bush and having conversation with So we with don't Moses. have a problem with this. Yeah, but <laughs> we don't have a problem with that because we believe Bible teaches that there is one God yeah. as a one being and he's in three persons. Right. God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit. So once when one person who of the Godhead enters to the world, still we got the, got the Son and got the Spirit out there. So, but the problem with ah. the Muslims is, there is only one God as a one being, and this God, Allah, steps into the world of man and then talks to Moses no, 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 at no, no, the no, burning no, 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 bush. Hold on a minute, hold on a minute. No Muslim would agree with what you just said. No Muslim it's that I've ever met in 35 years has ever said that Allah can enter into the world. Allah never comes and enters into the world. And this is really the problem right here, isn't if, it? If they say Allah cannot enter into the world, yeah. that means as a human being, they are limiting Allah. I don't think their scripture... Oh, I'm aware of that, but, I'm, but I don't think their scripture gives them that right. They can, we can, we this do, verse we do, doesn't give them do, that right. We do make lots of claims, but can we support any claims we are making from the scripture? So when Muslim tells us Allah cannot enter the yeah. world, Quran is disagreeing with that. And right here it should is. Should I go with Quran or should I go with my dear Muslim friends? I have to go with the Quran okay. because Quran is the book which makes eternal claim about their faith. Okay. So, are, are you all following this? I hope you're looking and seeing exactly what Hatun's bringing up here. Very, all she's doing and all we're doing here is reading the Quran at face value. We're looking at what the text says. It is obvious that whoever wrote the Quran borrowed this story from the Bible. Yeah. Right. And where in the Bible is it? In Exodus chapter Exodus 3. Exodus chapter 3, it's very clear there. When you borrow the story from the Bible, you better be careful because if you're going to borrow any biblical story, you're going to have to borrow also the intent. You're going to have to borrow the theology that goes with it. And yeah. in Exodus 3, it's very clear that God is there in that bush. Yeah. We don't have a difficulty with that because yeah. we know God can enter time and space anytime He wants. Yeah. And in Surah 27, it is very clear that Allah is there. In Surah 20, the same way. Yep. Allah says, verily, it is Allah who is speaking to you. Yep. If it is Allah speaking to them, that means, are you watching this? Both in Surah 20 and in Surah 27, Allah must be in that bush. Yep. And remember, there is no uh, second person is speaking. It is only one person who is having conversation with Moses. Now, Muslims have always said, if Allah, if God can enter time and space, if Jesus is God and He's on earth, if the Holy Spirit can come to earth and He's on earth, who's running the universe while Jesus is on earth? Who's running the universe while the Spirit is on earth? You've got that question all the time, don't you? Yeah. Uh, you can throw this question right back at them by looking here at Surah 20 and Surah 27. We answer the question in a sense that Christian scripture teaches there is one God in three persons they are working together as a team. Once one person of the Trinity steps into the world and decides to live among human beings for 30 years, 33 years, then God the Father and God the Son are still running the universe. Yet, I, I'm not sure how Muslim would respond to me <laughs> when I say, according to Quran, um, 
Allah stepped into the world, maybe had only five or six minutes conversation with Moses or even two second conversation with Moses. Who was in charge of the universe for exactly. that two seconds? So this question is much more damaging for Muslims yeah. because they believe that Allah is, only, is one. only one and his spirit is part of him. Yeah. So even if his spirit was entering time and space, who was running the universe then while he was in that bush? Yeah. Ooh, I love it. Those are good questions. So these are th a good theological. So we do know that Allah is able to enter time and space according to Surah 20 yes. and Surah 27. Uh, we do know that Allah is the creator. But you're gonna, you found some other problems, haven't you? You have, um, let me just go through and uh, talk about the creation. And I want to talk about Allah creating. I want to bring this up now, but we're going to bring it up yeah. later as well, because I want to show you something. Allah is not as great a creator as we think he is. Why I've always been told, well, thing, I've always thought, you know, when Allah does something, be in it is, you know. Uh, is that because Surah 3 verse 59 tells us, Jesus and Adam are the same, Allah says, be and it is. Yeah, that's right. That's why I've always thought. So I thought, usually, if um, the Spirit can do that that quickly, uh, then certainly Allah can do that that quickly. But uh, you found this Sahih Muslim. I'm going to put it up on screen. And yeah. we're going to read it here because Sahih Muslim, uh, volume 4, uh, hadith 39, uh, number 6707, says this. Abu Huraira reported that Allah's messenger took hold of my hands and said, Allah, the exalted and the glorious, created the clay on Saturday, and he created the mountains on Sunday, and he created the trees on Monday, and he created the things entailing labor on Tuesday, and created light on Wednesday, and he caused the animals to spread on Thursday, and he created Adam after us al noon was on Friday, so the last creation at the last star of the hours of Friday, in other words, between afternoon and night. So it took him six days. Actually, it took him seven days. Saturday to Friday, yep. I always thought it was six days. Uh, you you say six, day, six days according because to Quran, according six days. to Quran, in one verse there is six days, another verse is for eight days. So, so now we have six, seven, and eight days. Seven days here in the Hadith, six days in the Quran, eight days in the Quran in Surah 41. Yeah. So here's the problem. We've got a God of Quran who enters time and space and have conversation with Moses, yet there is no one, and the universe is all mess because there is no one who's in charge of the universe. And then we've got same God, according to the Islamic teachings, according to the Quran, Surah 3, verse 59, Allah creates by saying, be, and it is. Yeah. And then you just gave me a story of creation, which they, uh, what Allah created, and it doesn't look like that short, be, and it is. It looks quite long, in fact. Yeah. So all day it took whole 24 hours for Allah to make a clay, whole, to, whole 24 hours Allah to make the mountains. We're going to come back to this because you, there's another one that's even better than this that you have found, which shows that as he's creating Adam, Adam gets fed up with them and gets, says, hurry up because I, the, it's almost going to get the evening and I, I'm still not created. I want to be able to stand on my feet. We're going to get back to yeah. that. But I want to ask you, as we're getting back ready to come down, we're, we only have about five minutes to go. Yeah. So, as we're coming to the end of this episode, is Allah the only creator? Uh, according to Muslims, yes, and he has to be. According to the teachings of the Quran, no. Ah, okay. So, so uh, you found other Quran, creators. Quran is, um, people, makes, like, uh, people make miracles, turn the stake to snake, or turn the things, but there Take is... Take the rod to snake. To yeah, snake. But there is... Moses does that. The, the way Allah creates is unique. It is Out Allah creates, Allah creates different than man. So the way Allah creates, Allah creates out of nothing. As he creates, he breathes into it. He creates with, sorry, he creates with his breath. Okay, so you're saying with the rod of Moses, there had to be a rod there and he makes it into a snake. Yeah. It's not out of nothing, it's out of from something. Yeah. He just changes. He doesn't create really. It's changing from one thing to yeah. another. So one matter to another matter. Yeah. So when Allah creates, Allah breathes into the thing and then gives life. Okay, so something that is not there comes to something that is there. Yes, with the breath of Allah. Okay. Okay. Um, and then yet, we look at the certain verses in the Quran, and then we see a spirit of Allah, spirit from Allah, which is identified as Ruh in the Quran, creates exactly the same way Allah creates, with his breath. Okay. Um, interestingly, uh, Quran also teaches that Isa, 
who is, uh, according to the Muslims, would be the Muslim version of Jesus, creates exactly the same way Allah creates. Okay, we're going to get to that. We're, we're yeah. trying to jump in ahead. But I want to start with the spirit first. Let's do that. We're going to just introduce the spirit now. Yeah. But let's look at that. First of all, let me ask you, how do you define spirits? Are, are they angels? What are they? That's a good question. So Quran makes a distinction between um, what is angel, what is spirit, um, what is messenger, what is prophet, what is Allah. Okay, let's take a so, look at some of these. So um, Quran tells us, Quran tells us, angels and the spirit are different beings. Okay, we're going to put up on the screen so you can see it. Uh, different surahs. We'll just go through them very quickly yeah. where there, there is a difference between angel and spirit. Surah 16, ayah 2, according to Pictel's translation. He sendeth down the angels with the spirit. So with means separate, different. No, no. Uh, angels with the spirit. So angels are, and spirits are coming down together. But they're two separate things. They are two separate things. Angels but they're with the com spirit. They're yeah, coming together. They're, they're coming together. Okay. Uh, surah 16, ayah 102. Say, the Holy Spirit hath delivered it from thy Lord with truth, that it confirmeth those who believe. So here they have the Holy Spirit. It's not saying angels there. No. In here we see the Spirit of Allah is, is the one who brings down the truth. So Spirit of Allah is the one who brings down the Quran, for example. Okay. So 97 point, uh, Ayah 4. The angels and the Spirit descend therein. So here again, a separation. So we've got Ruh which is Arabic word for the spirit. And then we've got angel, Arabic word for angel is the malak. Uh, so they are two different beings and they are descending. They're both they're descending, okay. Yep. Surah 70, ayah 4, here we have it again. The angels and the spirit ascend unto him. Those yeah, so again, angels and spirits are two different beings, they're ascending. So it doesn't say the angels who are the spirit, it's very clear they're different. Yeah, they're different. So how do we know they are different? Because we, we go back to the Surah 89, verse 21 and 23. It is the same grammatical formula. Okay. okay, now that's the bottom of the page there. Yeah. Nay, but, let me just read it so you have. Nay, but when the earth is ground to atoms, grinding and grinding, and thy Lord shall come with angels, rank on rank, and hell is brought near that day, on that day man will remember. But how will the remembrance then avail him? So, Surah 89 tells us, angel, sorry, Lord and angels are two different beings. It is the same grammatical formula used in other verses. And then we see, so, angel and the spirit are two different beings. That's also echoed yeah. in Surah 78, Ayah 38. Again, the day yeah. that the spirit and the, the angel is making are, distinction yeah. between the two. Okay, listen, that's just to start. We're just getting into this. I, we wanted to bring that up. We're trying to look and see who are these divine beings other than Allah. We know that Allah creates. We know that He is the one that created the heavens and the earth. Yeah. Uh, we know that He is supposedly one. Uh, Muslims have always said that He has to be one, yet we're already finding out that this one Allah can enter time and space. We saw that in Surah 27, uh, verse 79. We also see that in Surah 20, verses 10 to 14. Uh, so we're looking and seeing all that this God, who is one, He also is able to come to earth and there talk within it, yeah. a, bird, a bush to Moses. So yeah. he is entered, entered a time in space. Now we're got moving ahead and we're saying, is he the only one that is divine? Does the Quran suggest that there are other divine beings that have equal power? Or I would suggest, as we're going to find out, that have even more power than Allah himself. And the first one we're looking at is the, the Hru Allah, Allah, the spirit yeah. of Allah. And we're finding that the spirit is not the same as angels. And then we're going to find next that the angels is not the same as Gabriel yep. or Michael. So that's going to come next. But we want you to do this. We want you to look at this. We want you to be aware of this so that you can see that there are some so strong theological problems here in the Quran. It's great having you here, Hatun. Thanks, we're going to Jay. continue to unpack this. Stay with us. Don't leave us. We're going to come back, unpack it, look and see what the Quran says about who this God is. Is he really Tawheed one? Does he share his glory with other? Can are there other beings that also can do what only Allah can do? Stay with us. We'll uh, see you again in episode 16. This is Jay, over and out.